thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you for the invitation to tell our little story about uh, trying to become a uh, human rights city. And um, for us, it started in, um, well, perhaps it had several moments it started, but in 2012, and was during the opening of the National Institute uh, for Human Rights uh, that's based in Utrecht, in presence of the Queen uh, of the Netherlands and the High Commissioner for um, uh, UN Human Rights, Mrs. Pillay in that moment. And she declared Utrecht um, more like a joke as the first human rights city of the Netherlands. But there were a thousand people listening in that room and um, it was a very special moment because then suddenly people realized that uh, this very small initiative we had started just a few years before um, when Utrecht started to try to translate human rights in, on the local level. And in 2011, uh, the year before, it was uh, the moment a local human rights coalition was born and consisting of local civil society, organizations, lawyers, the municipality, academics, NGOs, grassroots initiatives, cultural institutions and socially responsible businesses and others. And this coalition aimed to create an awareness and ownership of local human rights in order to enhance the translation of global values into local practices. And the, the first, the, the real initial moment was in 2009 in the, when the Utrecht was asked by the European Fundamental Rights Agency, um, the FRA, to collaborate and to join an international joining up fundamental rights project and about how cities could take responsibility for human rights at local level. And in this initial phase, the municipality together with the Utrecht University and the National Equal Treatment Commission investigated the quality of its municipal policies. So ten, in, in that early phase, 10 policies areas were selected in relation to their relevance for the political agenda at that moment and were critically reviewed from a human rights perspective. And this assessment did not cover all policy areas, but tried to strike a good balance between policy themes that had priority on both sides of the political spectrum. During this initial phase of becoming a human rights city, municipal officials were trained by staff members of Amnesty International and the involvement and knowledge of the Utrecht population on human rights issues was surveyed. After this first stage, the focus on local human rights approach changed into the direction of creating a local coalition with many local, national and international parties. And through the years, the human rights narrative became a regular point of reference. Although the local human rights project was embraced from the beginning by the mayor and some deputy mayors and some members of the city council, it had at first a skeptical reception in the administration, in the management. And um, so it was uh, not easy all the time. So between 2010 and 2018, a particular deputy mayor was appointed with responsibility for local human rights issues. A few years later, um, so I think so in 2015, 16, um, the city council also, uh, um, decided to become a children's rights city and also to have a an, an, an deputy mayor for children's rights. Slowly, the higher administrative levels too started to realize that human rights could truly uh, work as a framework to improve the quality of the life of citizens. And crucial in this change was the fact that also members of the city council slowly began more and more to refer to human rights treaties during the assessment and discussions of concrete situations and policies. And in 2018, for the first time, the city council referred in openly as an, um, in their um, public commitments to uh, Utrecht as a human rights city in the coalition agreement for the um, period of 2018 till 2022. So look, localizing human rights in Utrecht is an, in an explicit way is still a difficult process. 
and perhaps good to realize that generally when people in the Netherlands uh, think of violating human rights, they mostly think of situations in countries far away and not at home. They do not realize that these rights are also violated at local level and that raising consciousness of local human rights, the quality of life of all inhabitants, especially for those who are marginal in mainstream society, can increase significantly. So I will now try to deal with more um, about five elements and five characteristics of the Utrecht approach so far. And the first is the starting point of localizing human rights is a cultural process. The second, localizing human rights aims to find inspiration for better policies and concrete projects. Three, doing human rights marketing is very problematic on city level. Uh, for human rights should be on the political agenda with, without too much uh, politicizing. This is uh, very specific for the Netherlands, perhaps, but um, let's see. Five, empowering local actions by connecting to the international human rights city movement. Um, well, this, the first um, characteristic is um, about that we try to um, work on to, to work on human rights as an educational and cultural uh, program and that was um, actually not our first choice but um, our second best choice and because we in the beginning um, of course start with training the the people inside the municipality inside the administration um, together with Amnesty International, together with people from the university to tell the story, what is human rights about? And we did this assessment, uh, I showed you with the 10 policy areas. But um, so after this first period, it didn't, it, we didn't manage to, to do a kind of mainstreaming in the, in the policy making of, this, of the municipality. So it's um, actually we, um, had to choose for to make it a much more societal project and to to bring it in society and to try to create an, a movement that is talking back to the municipality so to to make it sustainable we uh choose um to for a more cultural approach and to tell to tell the story by all, the, all kind of art projects uh, on the street uh, expositions symposia and so on and to bring all these parties of this coalition uh, again and again together um, and to give them a kind of opportunity to have an overarching umbrella on um, their more specific actions on discrimination, on poverty, on migrants, etc. But by using the narrative of human rights, uh, suddenly they see that they have something in common and are a part of a bigger movement. So this is the the cultural approach that we choose because we didn't manage to have a very um well for uh, um, convincing approach inside the municipality and uh, so we became a less juridical project in the beginning and more cultural although the, you see the few months ago it was uh, also in the the, um, the city of rome uh, together with the ucrg uh, launched the Rome Charter for Cultural Rights. So you see that that culture in itself is um, in several cities is a very dominant uh, perspective on uh, pushing human rights on local level. A second characteristic on uh, is that the coalition wanted to have a significant impact on this long term societal ecosystem in Utrecht by concrete actions and co-initiated co by uh, the municipality, several policies were directly and indirectly influenced uh, by this local human rights culture. An example is the Bed, Bath and Bread um, project developed by organizations in the city of Utrecht that exceeded restricting national policies. So there was a real conflict that the national government told us you not allowed to take care about homeless, undocumented migrants. Um, the city provides 
uh, shelter to destitute irregular migrants, espousing the right to the city to provide bed, bath, and broth to everyone, irrespective of residential status. And on this issue, the, the, the city, among others, started a case at the European Committee of Social Rights uh, for undocumented refugees against a decision of the Dutch state that was won in 2014. So working through several local NGOs, the city would provide uh, shelter and access to medical care. Safe spaces and trusted communities partners make it easier to address underlying issues of irregular status, such as to secure the legal residence permit or assistance with uh, returning home. Um, a third characteristic is the attempt to stay away from city marking rhetoric. Um, uh, before you spoke about the utopian character and we were very much inspired by the book of Samuel Moyne, um, The Last Utopian, um, to say, well, it's, um, you never will be in human rights, it will always try to become one. And that is, uh, and when you um, say too loudly, we are a human rights city. Um, there is also a um, kind of, um, well, um, it's problematic in, in our uh, situation because you have so much criticism on using a kind of label that you always have to work on every day again. Uh, so we don't have a very clear branding strategy um, around all the activities of the coalition. And this is also a weakness. It's um, it's in, in trying to find and balance how how to speak about a human rights. Um, a reason for this position is, um, as I said, the coalition believes in the sensitivity of the concept, and um, that is not fits very well to selling nice stories about the city. It's a pers perspective of transformation, of hope, of future. And when it comes to human rights, um, it's impossible to be perfect and to come close to our collective dreams. Um, since Mrs. Pillay told this, um, this uh, informal suggestion, Utrecht first uh, human rights city of the Netherlands, this kind of announcement in the presence of a very large audience. So we, it forced us to communicate that um, this human rights um, ambition more openly. So we were too shy. So when you're not telling it, you're also not creating a force talking back to you and a push on yourself to, to do better and to find better policies and, um, and to also to, to um, well, to make it too, too small. So it, uh, we're trying to, to find it, it as a kind of inspiration for being self-critical and reflective kind of storytelling. And, but it's, as I say, it's still very difficult to find a good modus in this. Um, at the picture, you see one of the cultural projects about the, the huge discussion in the Netherlands about our colonial past and Black Pete. And um, we started to did this discussion in our city already six, seven years ago. And you see now that it's uh, after this, this time, it's uh, not done anymore to, um, well, to do black facing. And uh, there's also in the public space, one of the successes of uh, what happened in, uh, in the city. A fourth characteristics, uh, characteristic of the initiative in Utrecht is that we try to keep a kind of political neutrality and um, so we say we have to put all kinds of things on the political agenda, but without politicizing the left and right uh, parts of the political spectrum too much. And um, well, the coalition succeeded in placing several human rights issues on this political agenda without politicizing them and creating too much political tension. And this approach was also reinforced the belief that human rights should inspire innovative initiatives with a kind of neutral language that is available for everyone, always, everywhere. So human rights should be an inspiration for all political parties. And the strategy was human rights are simply there and the world community agreed on them and ratifying uh, human rights treaties. Well, this is the, 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 the kind of narrative we to to um, downsizing a little bit uh, 
the, that it's creating conflicts. So, and, and this kind of neutrality is uh, ultra cultivated by also minimizing the risk that different political interests would turn against the use of human rights at local level. An interesting example is the wish to become a children's rights city and to work a lot on uh, with children on telling the story of children's rights education. And, um, but it's also a kind of finding neutral um, exposure for human rights because nobody is against children. So it's a very um, uh, risk-free kind of uh, translation of human rights, in our case at least. And the first aim of the coalition was to make human rights a sustainable and a long-term discourse for the city. So we did we, cho we choose not to, to, to go too far to create a, a lot of people against the initiative, uh, because we already had people against us in the city management, in the administration. And um, so this neutrality could negatively be seen as a kind of avoidance of the struggle and the conflict that is inevitable, inevitable part of the human rights process. And Utra distinguished itself with, with this approach, particularly from a number of Spanish and French and South American cities that rely more on the Henri Lefebvre, the right to the city concept, which is more um, focused on the struggle to regain the city's capital and power by its citizens. A fifth and last uh, characteristic of Utrecht for, for, for today is um, the absence of uh, in the Netherlands of a national support and a national network of cities. Although Utrecht, together with the Dutch Association of Municipalities and Amnesty International and the Institute of Human Rights in the Netherlands and human rights researchers, tried over the years to set up a national uh, platform to support local human rights in Dutch municipalities and creating kind of a common lobby aimed at influencing the national government, this did not get really a foothold uh, due to low enthusiasm in other municipalities. Um, only uh, middle, the city of Middelburg and in some periods Amsterdam uh, joined us in uh, trying to push this uh, well the narrative of human rights to other municipalities and for this reason we started to join an international network because the lack of on the national level and supported by organizations uh, like the as i mentioned the fundamental rights agency in vienna and the uclg in barcelona and the committee of the uclg on human rights and the world forum uh, of human rights it is in Guangzhou, south korea uh, were very important for us and in this network we we try to do peer-to-peer -peer learning on questions such as how to communicate the theme of local human rights how to embed it in municipal organizations how to develop a form of monitoring how to deal with political changes when it's when a new mayor comes in how to well, how to have a long-term process uh, and not a political hobby uh, what themes do we focus on? Uh, what is the role of scientists and journalists? Um, what, how can they contribute, etc. But um, for now, the world is changing very rapidly, as we know. And if the concept of human rights city still had an aura of a free hobby about 10 years ago, in 2020, inequalities has grown very much. And cities will be places where in European uh, where European open democratic society is put on the test and cities will continue to function as laboratories uh, for pluralized Europe. So therefore it's great to see um, that more and more cities also in Catalonia and Basque country, but also in other parts of Spain and other parts of Europe stand up to align themselves to this worldwide movement of human rights cities and communities and in this very moment, we see new human rights cities initiatives, also in cities like Cologne in Germany, in Bergen, Norway, in Gdansk in Poland, uh, but also in Budapest uh, against the Hungary national government, in Lviv in, in uh, Ukraine, and outside Europe is also a lot of things going on. So I would say, uh, let's make our movement a big one. And in, 
in this very moment, we have perhaps, I, I would guess, 100 cities worldwide that call themselves human rights city explicitly. Let's create in 10 years time in 2030, also as a contribution to the global goals, a movement of 1000 cities. This inspiration makes your initiative even more important and meaningful. And therefore, I have to stop here with um, congratulating you with your initiative and ambitions and welcoming you in uh, our worldwide family of human rights cities. So thank you very much for all the energy you put in this uh, movement. Thank you. <laughs>